Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, August 17th. I am Shaka Sali. Today, we'll discuss the challenges and the benefits of development and humanitarian aid for Africa. The Horn of Africa is experiencing the worst drought in six decades. Some 12 million people are in need of food aid, and the UN says it expects famine to reach all regions of southern Somalia within the next two, eight weeks. Donor nations have supplied over a billion dollars in aid. The United Nations estimates over a billion more are in need urgently. My colleague Paul Sisko has more on the story. These are the lucky ones, so far receiving enough humanitarian assistance to stave off malnutrition. But tens of thousands of famine victims have already died in the Horn of Africa, and the situation is getting worse. Donald Kabaruka, president of the African Development Bank Group, says nature can be blamed for drought, but famine reflects a failure of leadership, poor policies, and in Somalia, 20 years of civil war. While the immediate need is to save lives, he says it is also for Africa to collectively further its commitment to sustainable development. Human Rights Watch released a report Monday saying all parties to Somalia's armed conflict have committed human rights violations contributing to the catastrophe. The group cites al-Shabaab militants, the Somali transitional federal government itself, African Union peacekeeping forces, and militias backed by both Kenya and Ethiopia. Human Rights Watch researcher Nila Goshal. Human Rights Watch is calling on all sides to immediately end abuses against civilians, hold those responsible to account, and ensure access to aid and to freedom of movement for people who are fleeing the conflict and the drought. J. Peter Fahm with the Atlantic Council agrees. Uh, Al-Shabaab certainly is guilty for the violence it has carried on for several years, the fact that its policies have exacerbated the effects of the drought and famine, the fact that it's preventing aid from reaching people. But they're not the only ones responsible. AU forces, he says, have taken unnecessary civilian lives in their peacekeeping role and conflict with the Islamic militants. Even now that Shabaab has withdrawn from large parts of Mogadishu, you have government troops that are stealing food from uh, people who are hungry, selling their weapons uh, that the international community has given them to fight the extremists to the extremists. And so there's enough blame to really go all the way around. Al-Shabaab forces have been forced from Mogadishu, but the militants are still banning humanitarian aid in territories it controls in southern and central Somalia. Humanitarian aid certainly is helpful if it's delivered to those who need it. The key there, whether it be in the current crisis in Somalia or elsewhere, is getting it to the grassroots through working through organizations that have legitimacy with the people and getting it to them and not letting it be siphoned off as unfortunately we're getting reports of uh, in Somalia that the transitional government and others are actually profiteering off the sufferings of the people. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says that even as donors rush emergency assistance to the needy, the focus must be on long-term food security. Food shortages may be triggered by drought. They are not caused by drought, but rather by weak or non-existent agricultural systems that fail to produce enough food or market opportunities in good times and break down completely in the bad times. Clinton adds that the world has the knowledge, tools, and resources to make hunger a distant memory if it has the will to do so. Even with massive overcrowding at its refugee camps, Kenya and Ethiopia are better off today, she says, than in previous droughts because of support given to small-scale farmers and herders. Eight years ago, drought put 13 million Ethiopians at risk of starvation. This year, less than 5 million Ethiopians are at risk. That is still an unacceptably large number, but it is also an astonishing improvement in a relatively short period of time. And it is evidence that investments in food security can pay off powerfully. The United States has pledged $3.5 billion to countries that commit to helping farmers and herders improve food security. Secretary Clinton is calling on other donor nations to do the same. Paul Sisko, VOA News.